Cars.coza. Budget insurance. Affordable because you can't afford not to. Hello and welcome to the inside of a Cherry Tigo 4 Pro. Yes, this is the new Chinese SUV on the market. A lot of people have been asking me about it, so I'm excited to review it. But before we continue, remember that Cars of Coza is not only the best place to buy a car, it's the best place to sell it. We have a product called Match. You go on the site, you list your car, and thousands of dealers around the country will bid on your car. So just head to Cars of Coza, top right, click sell your car, Boom, get the best price for your car. Right, here we go, Cherry Tigo 4 Pro Review. Right, so let's get on to what is this car? What's it like? What's it like to drive? What's it all about? Well, under the bonnet, 1.5 litre naturally aspirated or a 1.5 litre turbo. I'm driving the very top of the range Elite SE, which very creatively stands for Special Edition. That's what the SE stands for. <laughs> and I'll take you through why it's special in a bit. But under the bonnet, as I mentioned, you can choose from two engines. The Elite has the 1.5 turbo as standard, and this is a very good little engine. Overtaking is not a problem at highway speeds. It's nippy in and around town. In fact, actually put your foot down and this thing runs away like a frightened meerkat. It's pretty impressive actually. And it's even all the more impressive because it is coupled to a CVT gearbox. Now, if you've ever read a car review written by any motoring journalist that's ever lived, they will have moaned about the CVT gearbox endlessly. And I think for the most part that criticism of CVT gearboxes is justified. It's not the best kind of transmission. Now the reason why manufacturers like CVT gearboxes is because they're very efficient, so it brings down the fuel consumption, which brings down the emissions, which helps them meet very strict European emissions regulations. However, as a driving tool, they often are a bit rubbish. They sort of hunt, they make the engine drone a little bit, they're not very easy to get off the line, they sort of jump a little bit in the case of cars like say the Subaru Forester which I've driven. But in this car, I don't know how Cherry have got it so right. This is the best CVT gearbox I've ever used. It almost it's almost precognitive. It almost knows what you want to do next and it sort of prepares itself for what you're about to ask it for. It, it's really, really impressive. And it has this weird little quirk where you can flick it into manual mode and then you get nine digital gears, right? So CVT gearboxes don't have gears, but you get sort of nine pre-programmed kind of gears. Nine, don't know what the hell you need those for, but there's no flappy paddles. So you have to, you know, flick the stick like this which just seems very superfluous. I mean, it's so good in auto mode that you just leave it to do its thing, really. So I have no complaints about the drivetrain. It is front wheel drive. There aren't all wheel drive cherries available. So you have to stick to front wheel drive, but that's pretty common in this segment. Right, very important, fuel consumption. Fuel's very expensive. Petrol is so expensive. So depressing. Anyway, so fuel consumption in this car is not particularly great, if I'm honest. Um, averaging about nine to the hundred, which eh, it's okay. And and I think the one thing that's counting against it here is this car is so new. This particular unit I'm driving only has 1,800 kilometers on the odometer. So I think the engine's still very tight. It still really isn't properly run in. I think that consumption will be better. I also haven't really done any highway driving and I also drove to the set this morning with enthusiasm because I was late. <laughs> so that probably made it worse as well. Now you may hear the sounds of children playing in the background. We're actually in a park 
and there are lots of families having fun today and it seems quite fitting because this is the sort of car that I think they'd be really happy with. This is a great little compact family car and I think it's it's something that I would be happy commuting in Monday to Friday and one of the reasons is because of this interior. Well I mean just look at it. It's super modern, it's pretty, it's well designed, it's well put together. There's nice stitching everywhere. Look at that. Look at this brushed aluminium here on the door. More stitching down here. Nice red contrast stitching on the seats. Comfy leather seats. It is a really impressive interior. I quite like this as well. Everything is sort of touch sensitive here's your climate control these switches are nicely integrated into the dashboard very very crisp high resolution display on the screen here in front of me apple auto apple carplay rather android auto also supported as standard across the range this screen is actually standard to all of the five variants even the very budget one gets this big 10 inch screen in front of me fully digital instrument display now on the larger models sorry on the more expensive models the screen gets larger you get a slightly smaller one on the other cars on the other variants but it's an impressive screen nonetheless more affordable variants have a manual gearbox this has obviously got the cvt electronic handbrake with an auto hold feature as well you can probably spec a charging pad for this although the press release didn't say anything about it but i would imagine that you can that looks like where your charging pad would go in here a 12 volt socket and two usb ports that's quite useful as well all of your controls up here for your infotainment and for the screen in front of you that's very useful electric windows all round electrically adjustable mirrors there's so many nice touches like for instance on the door sill it says tigo and it lights up it looks really nice and expensive for instance when you walk towards the car the car automatically unlocks itself the mirrors fold out and there's a puddle light which says tigo at the bottom there's all these little touches which just make this feel like kind of like a, a baby range rover now i must point out that i haven't driven any of the lower spec models on the launch they only had these elite special editions to drive and obviously the car they've sent us is the elite special edition so i don't have too much experience of the cheaper models but obviously they wanted to put their best foot forward but let me take you through what your extra money gets you here so 269,000 for the base model, 359,000 for this, the special edition. So that's 90,000 Rand more, but you get 17 inch wheels, various exterior and interior red accents, a tire pressure monitoring system, a sunroof, which is very nice, six airbags, including curtain airbags, interior ambient lighting, the paddle lights that I mentioned, the very nice LED headlights and tail lights, and the larger instrument cluster that I mentioned. So at the top end, does this car feel worth it? Yeah, I think it does. Oh, hello. I'm just sitting in the back seat of the Tigo. Thought I'd review it for you, you know, while I'm here. So let's start with knee room. That's my driving position. Not too bad. I mean, I'm five foot nine, one seven four. Every time I put five foot nine on the channel, the South Africans complain that I'm not talking in meters. Surely everyone knows what six foot is. Anyway, sorry about the rant. The reason I have a bottle in my hand is because there's a perfectly designed door pocket over here for drinks which is quite cool you also get two drinks holders over here in the armrest one usb port quite a useful little pocket down there look at that that's quite cool and air vents for your rear passengers very comfy back here and also it's nice to know that in this model your rear passengers are protected by the curtain airbags A quick boot tour for you. Now, to go and research the figures, I used the amazing Cars at Coza app, which has been downloaded nearly 2 million times across the Android App Store, the Apple App Store, and the Huawei App Store. Go and check it out, it's completely free. And using the compare tool, I compared this to a VW T-Cross. Now, the first thing I noticed was the price. Top range T-Cross, 472,000 Rand, 112,000 Rand more than this. Ugh, that's quite a lot of money also something i wanted to point out i don't know why it's called the pro you can't get a non-pro version so they're all just called the pro let me take you through the boots now cherry doesn't advertise a boot figure i'm not really sure why so i'm kind of going on memory here and it looks about the same size as any of its competitors really i'm not i'm not shocked by how small or large it is but let's quickly do a cooler box test 
and we'll rate the cooler boxness of it. Yeah, that's about a, it's about a five, I'd say. It's about a five cooler box and quite a bit of height as well. Now, something that's quite nice, you don't have to pay extra for like you have to do in cars like the Hyundai Venue. The seats fold down in a 60-40 split as standard. And then a quick look at your spare wheel, which is a biscuit spare, unfortunately, but there are all your tools. Rot. Now, I must point out that I haven't driven any of the more entry-level Tigo 4 Pros. On the launch, they only had Elite SEs for us to drive, and obviously the test car they've sent us is the Elite SE. And I do understand they want to put their best foot forward, they want to put the best product out there for us to review. But keep in mind that you're not going to get all these bells and whistles, all the nice big wheels, the red trim, etc., on the entry levels. However, the press release, which was a little bit scant on detail, actually, if I'm honest, didn't make any mention of, say, cloth seats, for instance. So I can only assume that you get this leather or imitation leather, as it probably is, in all the models, for instance. But that's something to confirm with the dealer when you go and uh, check out one of these new cherries. So let's get into the topic of rivals, because this car has many let me see if I can get through them all in one go. Nissan Magnite, Suzuki Vitara Brezza, Toyota Urban Cruiser, VW T-Cross, Hyundai Venue, and actually, weirdly enough, a bit of an outlier, but the Haval Jolion. It's a larger car, but it's the sort of same price point as this car, so I think we do have to include it. So, there's lots for you to choose from, and that's what I'm here for, to help you. So let's go through a few things. I think this car has the best quality interior of any of the cars in this segment. I really do. I think they've absolutely nailed the interior. In terms of ride quality and noise vibration and harshness, there's not a lot of noise making it into the cabin. Uh, a complaint I had with the Vitara Brezza and the Urban Cruiser, which are the same car, is that at highway speed you had quite a bit of wind noise off the top of the A-pillar. This car doesn't have that. It feels like a well-insulated cabin. And when I drove this car on launch, we drove drove on some of the most shocking roads I've ever driven on around the heart of Beersport Dam and it just coped so so well with those terrible roads. Now I'm in the Western Cape and we actually have proper roads down here so I can't actually tell you how good the ride quality is because our roads are just so great just, there's no problems with them at all. <clears throat> anyway so ride quality great, engine great, drivetrain great, interior great. Um, What's wrong with it? Uh, let's get through the pricing. Maybe the pricing is wrong with it. At the bottom of the range, there are five to choose from. You've got 269,000 Rand as your entry level price, all the way up to 359 for this, the Elite Special Edition. So that's a price spread of about 100,000 Rand. It compares quite favorably at the bottom end to all of those rivals. In fact, I think Cherry had a good look at the rivals and basically priced it identically to the entry level models in those ranges. However, top spec, in here is quite a bit more than say the urban cruiser which tops out at about 330 this this tops out at about 360 so a bit of a difference at the top but for that extra 30,000 rand you are getting quite a bit more car for instance in the safety department you've got six airbags in here which is pretty impressive. Um, in the Urban Cruiser, for instance, you can't get electric seats. Here, your driver's seat is electric. That's quite nice. The camera system is also quite impressive. That comes as standard in the higher models. It's a well-specced car. I like the fact that you can get a car in the segment with six airbags. I think the only other one that actually offers that is the VW T-Cross, but that costs quite a bit more than this car. Now the most common question that's come at me on social media about this car is this big headline grabbing figure that Cherry have put out there, it's been very clever, it's gotten a lot of attention, of a 1 million kilometer engine warranty. Now what does that mean? 
So let's go back a step. The warranties on this car are very, very good actually. Five year, 150,000 kilometer with a five year, 60,000 kilometer service plan. Now that is some of the best warranties you'll find on the South African market, that's very good. But when you get to the end of that five year period, you will get extended to 1 million kilometers on your engine. But there's a catch. You have to be the original owner of the car. You have to have bought the car from new, kept it for five years, and then you qualify for that million kilometer engine warranty. That's quite interesting. I, I've never heard of a manufacturer do anything like that. And I suppose, look, it, you know, it gets attention. I mean, you know, they've, they've achieved what they wanted, but if they're willing to back up their cars with that kind of warranty, that shows a lot of confidence in their product. And I hope it gives you some confidence in the product as well. You know, the thing is, I point this out quite often on the radio show that I do. Volkswagen and Toyota, the two biggest brands in this country, actually offer the worst warranties. Their standard warranties are three years, same as Mazda actually. So, you know, if you jumped into a VW T-Cross, which is a rival to this car, you're only getting three years. You have to pay more for more warranty. And yes, this is a common tactic with new brands. Haval did it as well. They come into the market, they offer strong warranties. They are trying to buy market share, but hey, as a consumer, you benefit. Nothing wrong with that. So besides that 10 million kilometer, no, that's not right, 1 million kilometer warranty, the other big question I get is, is the Cherry reliable? Well, I think give me a bit of a break here. This car's been on sale since like last week, Tuesday. It's a little bit difficult to comment on the longevity of the car and the reliability of the car. All that being said, as I mentioned, there is a very strong warranty here. So you are protected in the case that anything goes wrong. But, you know, sitting here and driving this thing, I've now driven this thing quite a lot. I've had it for the last four days. It feels like a quality product. You know, the, the perceived level of quality is high. It feels like it's well put together. It feels like a solid drive. It really does. I, I'm, I'm guessing here, I don't have a crystal ball, but I can't really see this thing falling apart. And I think the problem with South Africans' view of the brand Cherry is this is not their first foray into our market. They were here in the late 2000s and they had some very, very subpar products like the Tigo, like the Cherry QQ, which was truly awful. And things didn't work out for them. Those cars were being sold here by the McCarthy Group and they really, really failed to find favor with South Africans and so Cherry pulled out of the country. The good news here is that these cars are not being sold by a distributor. Cherry is here. The mothership has opened a subsidiary of Cherry in South Africa. They are Cherry South Africa. So there's less chance that they're gonna pull out of the country, much less chance actually. And if you look at the efforts they've made to put in a big dealer footprint, there's 30 dealers already from start. Right now, there's 30 places you can buy a Cherry in South Africa or have it serviced. And that's really impressive as well. I find that I've driven a lot of Chinese cars recently and a lot of electric cars recently and it sort of shows you where this industry is headed and where the new players are coming from. And every time I drive a Chinese car, I find that I'm almost, I almost sound like a sales agent for one of these things. It's like it's too good to be true. And look, there's a chance that that could be the case five years down the line. I don't think it will be, but there is a chance. And then the biggest question that you're hoping for me to answer, should you buy a Cherry Tigo? Well, what I'm gonna to say to you is, you shouldn't ignore the Cherry Tigo. I think if you're shopping in this segment, if you're shopping in this price bracket, I don't think you should ignore this car. I think it should be on your shortlist, a car that you go and test drive, and a car that you go and take a deeper look into. If you're in this price bracket, the outlier again, as I said, is the Haval Jolion. It is quite a bit more car for your money, and you can get the second from the top variant of the Haval Jolion for the same price as this car. Well, no, about 10,000 Rand more, but that's not much if you're financing. So that's something to consider as well. And it's so interesting that I have the opportunity to compare a Chinese car to a Chinese car and highly recommend them as well. Just shows you how far these brands have come in such a short space of time. 
honestly, that old QQ that was in the country, this car makes that car feel like it was built in the late 1800s. It is, this is light years ahead, absolute light years ahead. Another nifty feature of this little cherry is the key. Well, or rather the lack thereof. So there it is, it's quite nice. Now I'm gonna put it in my pocket. The car is currently open and I'm just simply going to walk away. Little hoot, the mirrors fold in and the car is now locked. And now I'm going to approach the car. I've returned from my shopping journey. Car unlocks, key still in my pocket, hands free. Bye. Something I forgot to show you was the Cherry's voice assistant. Now it's actually quite smart. It understands lots of accents. You push a little button on the steering wheel. What's up? Open the sunroof. Okay, opening. Eh? That's kind of cool. Let's try another one. I'm listening. Open the passenger window. Opening. Ah! <laughs> okay, that's a bit spooky. <laughs> Cars.coza is so much more than just a YouTube channel. You've got to check out our app. It's been downloaded over 1 million times in the South African Android store alone. The links are in the description below and I promise you it is the easiest way to find your next car. Dream, search, drive. Cars.coza.